Hi guys, welcome to this video. I am your quantitative ability tutor Kasturi Sanat. Guys, today we are going to deal with quadratic equations. This is a very specific video because in this particular video, I am just going to deal with one type of a question. These kind of questions, they are related with quadratic equations and they are frequently asked in exams like RBI grade B. So in this kind of questions, you will be given two equations. One of the equation will have a variable x and the other equation is going to have a variable y. You are asked to find out the relation between x and y. Now the value of x and y is called as roots of that particular equation. So you have to first find out the roots of the equation, find out the value of x, find out the value of y by solving a particular quadratic equation and then you need to compare those two values to arrive at a conclusion related with the relationship between x and y. So guys, in this particular video, we are just going to solve these kind of questions and there are some tricks by which you need not even solve the complete quadratic equation. All you need to do is look at the signs of the quadratic equation and you will get the relation between x and y. So in this video, I am going to tell you those kind of tricks as well, which is going to minimize your time to solve these particular kind of questions. So guys, let's begin this video. So now this is the common format of a quadratic equation. A quadratic equation consists of a x square term. So I can write a particular quadratic equation as x square plus ax plus b equal to 0. Here a is the coefficient of my x term and b is the constant term. So if I have an equation which is x square plus 2x minus 4 equal to 0, I can say the value of my a is 2 and the value of my b is minus 4. So I can or if at all I have an equation which is 4x square plus 3x minus 6 equal to 0, I can just divide the complete equation by 4 and I get x square plus 3 upon 4x minus 6 upon 4 equal to 0. So the value of my a term comes out as 3 upon 4 and the value of my b term comes out as minus 6 by 4. So any quadratic equation I can form it into x square plus ax plus b equal to 0 format. Now let us see how we can solve these particular quadratic equations by just looking at the sign of a and b. So I am going to clear out my screen first. Now guys, you all know that a quadratic equation has got two roots, meaning x is going to have two values. <clears throat> now look at the sign of a, look at the sign of this particular middle term, which has a in it. So if the sign of my a is positive, it means one of the root is definitely negative. So whenever the sign of my middle term or the x term is positive, it means one of the root is negative. You just have to take the opposite sign. If my a value or if the coefficient value is negative, if the sign of my middle term is negative, that means one of the root is going to have reverse positive sign. So when the, when the value of my a or when the sign of my a is positive, it means one of the root is going to have negative sign and when this particular uh, a has negative value, it means one of the root is going to have positive, positive. So guys, I hope it is clear whatever is the sign of a, you just have to reverse the sign and that particular sign, that particular reversed sign is one of the root. So if my a is positive, then one of my root is going to be negative. If my a is negative, then one of my root is going to be positive. As easy as that. Now for the another root, like I said, x is going to have two values. So for another value, look at the value of b. So look at the sign of b. If the sign of my b is positive, it means whatever was the first root sign, that is going to be the same sign. The second root is going to have the same sign as the first root. 
so in this particular case the sign of my a was positive which meant my first truth had to be negative now the sign of my b is also positive which means that the second root is going to have the same sign as the first root which is negative now let's have a look at the second condition when the sign of my a is positive now here i have a which is having a positive sign what does that mean that means that my one root is going to have a negative sign so one of the root is going to have a negative sign but the sign of my b is negative which means that the sign of my second root is not going to be same as that of the first root so the sign of my second root is going to be positive only if the sign of b is positive it means that the second root is also going to have same sign like the previous root now if the sign of my a is negative it means that my first root is going to have a sign positive and the sign of my b is again negative so it means that the second root is going to have a different sign than my first root which means that the second root is going to have a negative sign now the sign of my a is negative which means that my first root is going to have a positive sign the sign of my b is positive which means that the second root is going to have the same sign as of my first root so always remember this particular table once you remember these this particular table two or three questions from the exam or at least one question you won't even have to solve you won't even have to touch the paper you can without even thinking you can mark the answer so you, it is going to save all the time now i'll tell you how to use this particular trick but always remember this particular table whatever is the sign of a and what is the sign of b it is going to tell you what is going to be the sign of your roots so let us see the application of this particular trick in our first type of question so the first type of question is where the first equation has plus plus signs that is the first equation has positive signs of a and b and the next equation has a has negative sign and b has a positive sign so when the first equation is having both the signs positive what does that mean that the value of my variable in this case it is p so the value of my p is going to be the first root is going to have negative value because my a has got positive value so reverse of that is negative and my b has got positive value which means that the second root is also going to have the same value like the first root so it is going to have a negative value so my p is both the values of my p are going to be negative now when i look at my q so q has got one value is negative the value of a is negative which means one of the root is positive and the value of my uh, b is positive which means that the second root is also going to have a positive value so now guys i have the value of p which is negative and the value of my q is positive what does that mean that means that my q is greater than p no matter what happens my q is going to be greater than p i need not even look at the equation so i can solve this equation within few seconds i need not even solve it actually to get the value of p and q all i need to do is look at the signs of my coefficients and arrive at a conclusion for this particular question so that was our type 1 please do not by heart it just by heart this particular table and i have taught you the logic to remember the table so please don't by heart it because in the time of exam at the time of exam you might miss it you might mess up with something and you might miss that particular question so just remember the tag that i have taught you now let us go to the type 2 of the question so in type 2 of the question we have both signs are positive again which means that the sign of my roots is going to be negative both of my roots are going to be negative here we have x so x is going to have both negative value now let us see the other equation so the other equation has got both negative values what does that mean that means that the value of my y one value is going to be positive and the other value is going to be negative oh my god i cannot draw a conclusion between x and y just looking at these particular signs so i need to solve it 
Now, how do I solve it? I have x square plus 9x plus 20 is equal to 0. Now, I just factorize 20 in such a way that I get two factors and the sum of these two factors is my middle term. So, I have 4 and 5. I divide 20 into 4 and 5 and I get x square plus 4x plus 5x plus 20 equal to 0. And I solve it and I get the value of x as minus 4 and the other value of x as minus 5. This is a longer method to solve this particular question. But remember, if at all you have the coefficient of x square as 1, all you need to do is you have to find out the factors and you just have to reverse the sign. So in this case, I have found out the factors which is 4 and 5 and I have just reversed the sign. So the value of my x becomes minus 4 and minus 5. So it becomes very easy for you to do it. You don't have to solve the entire thing, take out the common factors and then uh, solve that for the value of x. All you need to do is find out the factors, reverse the sign, that is the value of your x. Now in this case, in, in this particular case, you will have to solve this particular equation for the value of y because the coefficient of y square is not 1. This trick, the trick that I explained you of reversing sign, it works only if the coefficient of of the quadratic term is 1. So let's solve this, not a big task. We have 5y square. 5 into 2 is 10. So I have to divide 10 in such a way that the sum comes out as minus 3. So I am going to have minus 5 and minus 2. So I have minus 5y plus 2y minus 2 equal to 0. I take out y common from the 5y common from this term. I get y minus 1 and I take 2 common. I again get y minus 1 equal to 0. So the value of my y is 1 comma minus 2 upon 5. Minus 2 upon 5, by the way, is 0 0.4. Minus 0 0.4. So, if at all, I am just going to rub out this equation. Mark it on a, uh, on a scale. I have 0 here. And I have x values of minus 4 and minus 5 here. And I have y values of 1 and minus 0 0.4 here. So, which means that my lower term, my y, is greater than x. So, I know the answer. My y is now greater than x. Now, let us see what happens when you have a equation wherein one value is positive. So, the value of our a is going to be positive, which means that my x is going to have a negative value. And the value of my b is negative, which means my x is going to have the second root as positive. So, in this case, it is 20. So, I divide 20 as 5 and minus 4 and I get the value of x. I just reverse the signs minus 5 comma 4. So, I've got the answer and this is same as the previous. This equation is same as the previous equation. Yes, it is exactly the same. So, the value of my y comes out as 1 comma minus 0 point. Okay. So, when I put it on a scale again, when I put it on a number line, I have x which is minus 5 somewhere out here and I have x which is 4 somewhere here. And my y is 1 which is here and minus 0 0.4 comes out somewhere over here. So, what can I say? Can I say that my x and y has absolutely no relationship because what happens if the value of my x is minus 5 and the value of my y is minus 0 0.4 in that case y is greater than x but what happens if my x has a value of 4 and the and my y is having a value of minus 0 0.4 then in that case my y is less than x so definitely there is no relation there is absolutely no relation no relation can be drawn between x and y's values let us see the next problem. If one of the equation is having a negative sign, which means that one of the root is going to have positive sign and b also has a positive sign, which means that the second root is also going to have a positive sign. 
Now there is again another equation which has a negative and negative sign, which means one of my root is going to have positive sign and the other one is going to have negative sign. So again, we are we don't have anything in common. We will have to solve the equation. So this equation is x square minus 9y plus 20. So I have minus 4 and minus 5 as the factors. So the value of my x comes out as 4 and 5. This is same as the previous equation, x square minus 3y minus 2. Yes, it is exactly the same. So the value of my y is 1 comma minus 0 0.5. Now I need not even plot it. This is pretty evident that the value of x is greater than the value of my y. Come what me, both of these values are they are lying uh, towards zero side, towards the lesser side and both of these values of x they are lying towards the higher side. So x is greater than y. In this particular case x is greater than y. Let us see the fifth type. Here we have an equation wherein the value of my a is negative which means that my root is going to have a positive value and the value of my b is positive which means my second root is also going to have a positive value. Now again the next equation has a negative value which means one of the root is going to have positive value. Uh -oh. Now again we will have to solve and b is having positive value which means my second root is also going to have a positive value. So yes, we need to solve this particular equation again. So the value of when of my x comes out as 4 and 5. Uh, because this is this equation is same as the previous question. And the value here I need to solve it. 5y square minus 5y minus 2y plus 2 equal to 0. I take 5y common, y minus 1 minus 2 common, y minus 1 equal to 0. So the value of my y here comes out as 1 and 0 0.4, positive 0 0.4. Now as you can see the value of x exceeds the value of y. So yes x is greater than y, you can draw it on a number line you'll always get x greater than y. I always consider drawing things on number line because that gives me a, main, a picture that gives me more clarity. But yes, of course, if you don't have time, then don't keep drawing the number line. You can just compare it. Now we have the sixth case and the final case wherein one equation is having a positive, which means one of the root is negative. B is having negative sign, which means one of the root is positive. The other equation has got a positive which means one root is negative and b has got negative sign which means the other root is positive. So here also we have a case wherein we need to solve this particular equation. So the value of my x comes out as 4 and 5 which is similar to the past, past equation and the value of my y comes out as even we have solved this particular equation also it comes out as 1 comma minus 0 0.4. Let me check if this is the same equation. Minus 3y minus 2. No, this is different. So let's solve it. So the value of y comes out as minus 1 and 0 0.4. Okay, the opposite of what we had got previously. Now if you look at this particular values or also no need to draw it on the number line. You can conclude x is greater than y. So I have taught you the cases wherein you can just read the sign of a and b and you can come to a conclusion. Of course the probability is very low but that is going to save a lot of time because you don't need to solve that particular equation. Those two equations in fact. So let us see if we can apply it in these, these problems, these practice problems. So we have the first equation which is having the value of a as negative which means one of the root is going to be positive. The second value is also positive, b value is also positive. So both of them are having positive values. Both the roots are having positive values. In this case also both the roots are going to have positive values. Oh my god I need to solve it. So when I solve it I get 8x square minus 8x minus 7x 
plus 7 equal to 0. All I do is I multiply this. And I get the answer as 8 into 7, but 8 into 7, uh, 8 into 7, 8 plus 7 is 15. So I just skip the calculation. The value of my x comes out as 1 upon 8 and the second value comes out as 1. Now let us see the next equation. 2y square minus 7y. I can write 7y as 4 and 3. So I have minus 4 and minus 3. I can write it as minus 4y minus 3y plus 6 equal to 0. So here I take 2y common. So I get the value of y as 2 and the second y comes out as 3 upon 2 which is 1.5. 1.5. So if you look at these values y is definitely greater than x. So I can conclude y is greater than x. Okay, so let us solve the next question. And in the next question, I have made a goof up. Instead of 2L, this is a typing error. It had to be 18. So let us solve it, guys. Please consider this as this equation as 18 upon x square plus 8 plus 18 upon x equal to 8 upon x square. Yeah, a lot of ways. Now I take it to the side. I take this 8 upon x square to the other side and I get 10 upon x square plus 8 plus 18 upon x equal to 0. So is it a regular quadratic equation? Yes, actually it is a regular quadratic equation. If you take the LCM, the LCM comes out as x square. So here I have 10 plus 8x square plus 18x is equal to 0. So when I solve this, I get 5 plus 4x square plus 9x equal to 0. I am going to rearrange the term so that it looks like my old quadratic equations and it looks familiar to me. 4 into 5 is 20 so I have to divide 20 in such a way that the sum is 9 and I have 5 and 4 as the factors. So 4x square plus 5x plus 4x plus 5 equal to 0 and I get 1 minus 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 1 
if the value of my y is 2.33 and the value of my x is minus 1, then definitely my y is greater than x. But what if the value of my y is minus 2.33 and the value of my x is minus 1.25? Then there is no relation. So in this, this was a catch of this particular problem and the correct answer is that there is no relation between the values of x and y. So guys, please be careful when you are asked problems which are related with squares or which are related with square roots or which are related with the fourth root, with the sixth root because you have to consider all the possibilities. You have to consider uh, the negative value of the root as well. So with this particular question, I am ending this video. I hope you all have liked and understood this concept. So stay tuned for more videos. Thank you so much.